Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. You know, when you're young, you're, you're looking, keep looking forward to all the things that God is going to do, you know? And let me just say, I'm still looking forward to all the wonderful, marvelous, glorious things that God's going to do in the earth and even in my life and through my life to help other people to know God. <clears throat> but at the same time, I'm, I'm in a place where I can reflect back at the last 40, I don't even know anymore, going on 45 years of walking with God and seeing how faithful God truly is in the ups and downs, the ins, the outs, the sad, the happy, the, the good, the trials, the, the glory, all the times and all the ways that God has been so real in my life. Amen. And, and, and realizing, you know, like, I don't know, how old is this church again? <laughs> what is this year? 21. We're, uh, are we 30, 25, 27, 27? <laughs> I couldn't think for a minute. I don't even know what year it is. For, uh, for, for this 27 years and, you know, how, how your own, you know, we continually have a walk with God, no matter what we're doing in life, we are continually walking with God and God's doing things, but just realizing that there's so many, and all the times, uh, I, I can't count <laughs> in 27 years how many times I've taught or preached the word of God, not only here, but where in other countries or wherever I've been, and thinking about how, you know, you teach and you preach and you teach and you preach, and then, and, and realizing there's, there's just some things that you can't teach. You know, there's some things that can't be taught. You just, they can't be taught. They, they, you have to, they have to be caught. Amen. You can't teach them. Amen. You, you have to ex, experience things. And, um, and thank God for the, the preaching and teaching of the word. And, and our example always is, you know, this is a problem that we can get in the body of Christ. And, you know, you know, Paul even alluded to that, you know, who you follow after. And there's a lot of different people, a lot of people follow after, but we're, but we have to remember that we're really following after Christ. You know, that we can filter Christ through the situation, through the person, because it's really about, it's really about Christ. It's really about Jesus. And so just looking back in, in my own personal life and thinking about how, you know, I, I, you know, once in a while, Rev. Jean, I'll be talking about something in the past, and I'm like, wow, that was a whole lifetime ago, you know, when, when I was in my 20s and when, when I was married to my first husband, and then when he passed away and, and I was a single parent, and, like, that was a whole nother life. I mean, being married and having a child and a home in the suburbs, and then, and then my husband passing away, that was a whole nother life, and then I became a single parent. That was a whole adapting and learning and figuring out with thank God with God and um and then and then and getting married and you know living in, in Chicago and you know being from there and and then moving to Oklahoma it's like everything that I've gone through in my entire life that he's always been there and he's so consistent and he never changes and though all the things in my life and all the tests and all the trials, I am here to say that God never changes and he's always there and he's always faithful and he's always on time. But, you know, when I'm going, when we go through these things, it doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always seem that way. It doesn't always seem like God's listening. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It doesn't always feel like God cares. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like our prayers are being heard. But let me just say, God knows what he's doing. And all we are asked to do is believe and trust in him. 
And, and he wants us to know the word and to know what it says. But even more than that, he wants us to experience him. You know, you can go to a place of, they have theological seminaries. <laughs> uh, the, Brother Hagen used to call them theological cemeteries. <laughs> they have theological cemeteries where, where people go to die. <laughs> That's what he'd say. People go to die because they go to just learn the letter of the word and not the love of the word. Amen. Because it's, we need to learn what the word of God says. But we've got to remember the root in which it comes from, and that's from the heart of God. Because this book's not necessarily it. You say, well, it's not a book of do's and don'ts. Well, there are a lot of do's and don'ts. <laughs> there are. <laughs> There's a lot of things that God tells us to do. And it's, let me just say, when God says, when God ever says to do something, it's never a suggestion. It's always a command. Amen. And so when this word does, is a book of rules and regulations because our flesh doesn't want to line up to righteousness. In our hearts, we want what God has for us, but not if it's not what we don't want. Amen. And so we, we have to um, go beyond just having a mode of wanting to learn but we can't let go of the learning and, and, and hearing teaching and preaching. We've got to get to that place where we want to um, catch the spirit of faith and, and catch the spirit of God and, and, and let the, the anointing and the Holy Spirit have his way in our lives. Amen. We can't do that for one another. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if somebody could do that for you? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if somebody could do it for you, could do all your praying for you and do all your studying for you, go to church for you and do, <laughs> but nobody can do this for, for you. We all as individuals, when I was 25, I, you know, being in Chicago, that was pre word of faith churches. <laughs> In Chicago, if you weren't Catholic, you weren't anything. <laughs> because that Catholic, let me just say, Chicago, I'm not sure if it still is, but it was when I was growing up, the largest Catholic archdiocese, and it was even bigger than Rome. <laughs> There's more Catholics in Chicago <laughs> than there were in Rome. <laughs> and so that's what I grew up around. That's all I knew. We were never told to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We just were told, all we learned was the history of Jesus over and over and over again. Recycle the history of Jesus. And I thank God that I was taught about Jesus because in this world, most people never hear about him. People aren't taught about Jesus. But I was taught about Jesus. So when push came to shove, when I needed God desperately, when I needed God desperately, I called on Jesus because that's all I knew, that Jesus was somehow the way to God. I didn't understand why or how, but it was put in me that Jesus was the Son of God. So somehow I had to go through Jesus. Thank God for that. And, you know, even at the age of 25, what I experienced, that's why my heart goes out to people of all ages, but especially the young generation of this hour, my heart goes out to them because there's so many experiences out there. There's so many things you can experience all day long. Your feelings, you know, there's so many things, but the bottom line is we have to experience God. But it has to do with our hunger and thirst. We have to hunger and thirst after righteousness and then we will be filled. But, you know, going back, there's so many times there I felt like God had forsaken me. You ever feel like in prayer or you're going through a test or a trial and you feel like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does any, anybody ever feel like that besides me? Where you feel like 
Is God really real? Does God really care? Does God really hear my prayers? Does God really love me? I mean, I could see where he might like them or them, but I don't know about me. But we have to have an experience knowing that God, I, I had an experience that I could never turn my back on. And sometimes I feel like, you know, you see young people and they just fall away from God so easy. You know, one little thing happens and they're gone. And, you know, something happens in the church and they're gone. And, you know, preachers do this and, you know, sins over here and all of these different things. God didn't answer my prayer when I wanted him to. Or, you know, the person I wanted to be with is with somebody. All these things and people turn their backs on God. Amen. There is no excuse. If, if God be God, then we've got to experience him personally in our own lives that we'll never turn our back. I, I, it's, I, I can't, couldn't turn my back on God because I've experienced the reality of God way too many times in my life. He has been there through thick and thin and up and down. And, and let me just say, had he answered my prayers exactly how and when I want him to? Absolutely not. <laughs> I would say probably never has he ever answered any of my prayers how I wanted him to and when I wanted him to. He always seemed to be a little late, and he always tweaked what I thought. But then I realized it was better. More, more better for me. More better for me to leave it in the hands of God. You know, and I was thinking about I was um, the other morning when I got up and I was praying. I was just praying and talking to the Lord, and so He started talking to me about about counsel. You know that um, uh, Jesus referred to uh, the counselor. That was how often did He refer to the Holy Spirit? You know, we have to remember too when Jesus told the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit, He was it was not a suggestion. It was command. And so who are we in the church today to dismiss the Holy Spirit? Without the Holy Spirit, you're not with God. The only way you could be with God is with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he talked about the vital importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. But in John chapter 14, you know, he he taught and he, and he preached to the disciples all the time. He would preach and teach, uh, you know, large crowds and large groups, but he also would preach to just his disciples, to a small group like this, right? For the extra special, deeper stuff. <laughs> and so in John chapter 14, starting at verse 15, John 14, 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. That's somebody that is on your side. I don't care if the whole world turns against you. God has given you somebody that is always on your side. Let me just say, he might not always approve of what you do, and he might not approve of everything you say, and he might not approve of the way you think, but he's always on your side. I don't even know how else to say that. You could be the biggest jerk <laughs> and God is on your side and he's so much on your side, he wants to pull the jerk out of you <laughs> and teach you to not be. Amen. So he said, I, he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit, that's the big S, Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Spirit, the Spirit of truth. There is no truth. Let me just say, we are in this world right now. You know, Satan's the God of this world, the world system, the one world system. He, Satan's the God of the world, but we're not of this world. Amen? We're not of this world. And there is a war right now on truth. If you realize anything that's going on right now in the world, whether it's political, medical, multicultural, all of this stuff, all this race stuff they're trying to kick up and make up again, all of the stuff that's going on in the earth right now, 
It's only a war on truth. It's a war on truth. And so he said he's the spirit of truth. So the church better have the truth. And you can't have the truth unless you have the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Now this he was sp spoke before he ascended on high. So that's why the last thing he said, he reminded him. Now, now listen, boys, don't go anywhere until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be filled with power. And so he taught them. And he said, you know, I taught you all about, all about him. I told you that I was going to send I was going to send an advocate. Well, they didn't know if it was just going to be like Jesus showed up, a baby in a manger. He sent an advocate. They're like waiting for, waiting for the knock on the door. <laughs> okay, the Holy Spirit's coming. Let's go meet. We'll just sit up in the upper room. We're just going to pray, and we're going to get that knock on the door. Oh, he knocked on the door, didn't he? He blew the door off the hinges. But he said, the world cannot accept him because they neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So in other words, he's saying after the death, burial, and resurrection, then he told him, okay, now he's coming. He's going to be in you. I will not leave you as orphans and I will come to you. And then going over to verse 25, it says, all this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the advocate, you know, the one that's on your side, the holy, he's a holy that's why you don't feel good sinning because if the Holy Spirit's in you, he's going to be scratching on the inside. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all, you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then if you go <clears throat> into verse 15, at the end of 15, it says in verse 26, 15, 26, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father... Right? That's why he had to ascend, right? And then he sent. <laughs> Remember, before he ascended, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Then he ascended. And when he got there, then he sent the Holy Spirit, right? The advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from, out from the Father. He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So in other words, he's saying, you know, you all are going to be preachers after this. <laughs> when you, but when the, he told them right there, <clears throat> he said right there, after the Holy Spirit comes, then you're going to be preachers. Because he's saying when the Holy Spirit comes, when he comes. Amen. So then in verse seven, 16, verse 7, it says, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, the one that's on your side, no matter how, Messed up you are. He's always going to be on your side. Amen. The advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. So in other words, the Holy Spirit can't come unless Jesus ascends unto heaven. And so he ascended into heaven <laughs> so he could send the Holy Spirit to live in us. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because people do not believe in me, and about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The prince of the world stands condemned. Why? Because Jesus had already died. I was getting, I was getting ready to die. So he's saying because Jesus, the son of the living God, the Messiah, <laughs> amen, <laughs> the 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 Satan was going to be proven, amen, and we, knowing that we are going to have authority by the Holy Ghost over him. He stands condemned. <laughs> he was condemned from the foundations of the earth. <laughs> He's condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when the spirit of truth, I love it because he calls him the spirit of truth, because I don't care what anybody says and what anybody thinks, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit in us is the Spirit of truth. When he comes, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he 
hears and he will tell you what is yet to come and he will glorify me because he is from me and he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs <clears throat> to the Father is mine and that is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Amen. So in other words, he's telling the Holy Spirit how the important, the importance, the vital importance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, amen, you can talk about the Holy Spirit for the rest of your life, but you must experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is the, the third person of the Trinity, the third person of God, the person of God that lives in us. And he's no less holy and no less righteous and no less powerful than God, our Father, who sits on the throne, the creator of the universe. He's the same spirit of the living God who lives in us. And see, these are the things that the church, even though we can talk in tongues, these are the things of the church that the church has gotten way, way far away from. He, he is the counselor. He is the comforter. He's our advocate. He's on our side. He wants to help us and teach us. Amen? He wants us to, he wants us to know that this is a package deal. Salvation is a package deal, and the package is no different from one person to the next. But it does, it might look, our lives might all look different. We all might be from different locations. We might be from a d different background. It doesn't matter. God is still the father of us all, and God is not withholding any good thing from his people. And we have everything pertaining to life and godliness through our knowledge, our knowledge of him. But we, ha we have to experience this multifaceted God. This, mul I, I know, when I said, I was thinking to myself, God is multifaceted. And so I thought, oh, what is that? So I looked up multifaceted. And when I looked up multifaceted, it automatically said multifaceted God. <laughs> you know, a facet is like if you have a diamond, oh, like a big diamond. <laughs> it, they're cut certain ways and angles. It's got every side, every little part of it is a facet. And that's the only thing I can explain try to somewhat explain what multifaceted is because diamonds are multifaceted because God's multifacetedness <laughs> is more so much more than the shape of something. The, God's multifaceted is, is so deep and it's so high and it's so wide and it's so profound it's so loving and kind and merciful and compassionate. And it's so powerful and righteous. There's so many facets of God and we must begin to learn about all of them. We want to know all the facets of God, though it will take all eternity to learn. But we need to know now because those facets will come very important to you in your life for things that you have faced. I can look back at my life and think, wow, that was a different time. <laughs> that was a whole other part of my life and my walk that <clears throat> I am glad that it's over. <laughs> I am glad <laughs> I'm a little smarter than that now. And let me just say, I, I've learned facets of God through every test and every trial and every tribulation. I've learned how stupid I really am and how smart he really is. I've learned how impatient I can be and how long-suffering he truly is. I've learned so much about God through every torment that I've put myself through. And let me just say, a lot of them, a lot of them we do. He is the counselor. How much we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. He's with us in our cars. He's with us in the shower. He is with us when we go to bed at night. 
He is with us when we're eating. He is with us when we're in front of the television set. He is with us when we're looking at our phone. When we look at the screen on our phone, he is with us. He's with us always. Amen. If we have the Holy Spirit, we, he's always there. And, and he, he's the counselor. He's the comforter, but he counsels us. We all, we all need counseling. Let me just say, I'm going to be 70. I rely more on the counselor now than I did probably in my 30s. <clears throat> because now I have all these bad mistakes that I made that I can look back at and realize if I would have just listened. If I would have just listened to God. <clears throat> Let me just say, I, I can teach some things just from my experiences in God. Where you just have that feeling God wants you to do something else, but you're just so bent you're going to do what you want to do anyway. You know, go ahead and do it. Because <laughs> God, the Father, is a... a a big enough father that he can pick you up off the off the ground with your your scratched up knees and elbows <laughs> and then you have to go through the healing process because i'm just saying i've done some things where god counseled me he's the counselor counseled me in a certain way about things and i thought yeah i'm going to do that but first <laughs> <laughs> First, let me do this. <laughs> I always think I can add a little wisdom to the wisdom of God. Like, that's really great, God. But I think maybe I should do this first. Or go there first. <laughs> Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Does anybody think that they got better counsel in their life than anybody else? So, so God has given us a counselor, the Holy Spirit, to teach us, lead us, and guide us. And so God wants to teach us by the word. He wants to teach us by the spirit. And sometimes if we're thick headed, God will bring somebody across our path and they'll just like say something. You're like, oh my gosh, that was so God. Anybody have just even like a stranger or it could be a spouse or it could be a friend. It doesn't even have to be a Christian, but somebody will come across your path and they'll just say something because God has already tried to get your attention and you weren't listening and now he wants to get, why does he want to get it? This is how people think, God just wants to take away all my fun. God loves us so much that he wants to keep us from falling off the cliff. Amen? Because you fall off the cliff, he'll still be with you and he'll have to pick you up and heal all your broken bones. <laughs> but he doesn't want us to go off the cliff. Amen? He wants us to walk with him. Thank God for the counselor, the Holy Spirit. He will teach us and lead us and guide us into the truth, things that won't hurt us. And let me just say, a lot of problems that we have aren't really the issue, isn't what we're, sometimes it's not what we're doing or what, you know, unless you're, you know, strung out on drugs and alcohol and pornography or whatever, those things are harmful. But sometimes we do things that you think that's not really a bad thing, but it's harmful to us because of the place we place it on the altar of our hearts our hearts that's called idolatry the first commandment is that we should have no other gods before us nothing should play, take the place of god in our life so well, we don't like take the place but it's sitting right alongside of him so we we have to god wants us to experience the fullness of him in our lives and so all of those things have to be put aside. Does that mean it's going to be totally out of your life? I don't know. You're going to have to find out from the counselor. But how many of you want God's absolute best? You know, the be whenever I got God's best was when I just surrendered everything. <laughs> Instead of trying to help God to counsel me. <laughs> Has anybody here? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever help God to counsel you? Maybe you're like, I've never even tried to get counseling from God. Well, that could be the problem. Amen? God wants us to have the best life, the God kind of life, with health and healing and, <clears throat> let me just say, joy. <laughs> that would be a funny one to think back in the 90s, how we had the <clears throat> the 
revival of joy in the church. And I don't know what happened. We hit year 2000, but it started drying up. People don't even, Christians don't even smile anymore. And you're like, smile. Right. <laughs> Amen. We should be the most joyful people on the planet because of what the future holds for us. He's looking for those that are seeking him. And those that refuse to seek him will fall away. And so the, the comforter, the counselor, is counseling people right now. He's nudging people and talking to them and saying, you need to spend time in the Word. You need to, you need to be in prayer. You, just need, you need to spend time with me. You need to stop doing this, and you need to stop doing that, and you need to go there, and you need to stop going there. <laughs> God is counsel. He's the counselor. He's, why would he give us a counselor if he's never going to talk to us? He's constantly trying to counsel us and nudge us in a direction that's good for us and to stop us from doing the things that aren't. How do I know this? I can look back at the last 40 some years, going on 45 years, I can look back and think, see all of the times he was trying to nudge me and I was being a little stubborn and I paid the price. And I could see the times where he was nudging me and I went with it right away. I can see the times he was nudging me and I was resistant or not listening, and then he'd nudge me again and nudge me, and I'm like, is, he try, is God trying to tell me something? You ever feel like that? Is God trying to tell me something? <laughs> and then he's trying to, you know, and then you're like, by chance, you just saw him to open your Bible and flip on a page, and you're like, oh, hmm, that sounds like what I feel like he's trying to talk to me about. I think I'll just put that aside. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you go to work or something or school, and all of a sudden somebody just walks up to you and starts talking. All of a sudden they say something, you're like, oh my gosh, I feel surrounded like God surrounded me. Because God is the counselor. <laughs> Amen. And he wants to counsel us right into his perfect will, plan, and purpose. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he's our advocate. He's on our side. He's on our side. Most people think that, you know, God's mad at them and wants to torture them and doesn't want them to have anything good and, you know, doesn't like them. That, that is so false. That is so demonic. That is so doctrines of demons. People are like, well, God doesn't heal everybody. Well, I don't know about your God. My God heals everybody because he already healed them on the cross 2,000 years ago. All you got to do is receive what he already did. You know, people will just fight tooth and toenail with you. Christians, tongue-talking Christians, fight you tooth and toenail to tell you how horrible God is. I'm like, you came too late. Because I was taught, but even more importantly, I caught something in the, in the presence of God. He's a good God, and he wants what's best for me. Even when I resist it, God wants what's best for me. Amen? Why? It's just more better for us. It's more better. Amen? Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you so much that you love us, and you want us to know what's best, and we can only know by your word and by your spirit. I thank you, Father, for the precious Holy Spirit that you've given us to live in us the hope of glory. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Have your way in our hearts and lives. Let's, let's say this prayer together. Say, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Help me to not be so stubborn. Help me to hear more clearly what you're saying and that I would have the strength to do it. I commit my life to you, Lord, to do your will because you know more than me. You know what's best. So I thank you, Father, that you heard my prayer as I have prayed according to your will. And you hear me and you will answer. So I thank you for it, Father God. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen.